All around us are people who've struggled and succeeded. Now they're changing their lives and the world around them in their own unique ways. Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies bring you these stories and more from the people who make things happen. This is Success Insight. Hello, everybody. This is Howard Fox, your host of the Success Insight podcast. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I am so very excited to introduce to you a gentleman that I've gotten to know over the past couple months through some networking interactions that I uh, am participating in on a, on a monthly basis. And this gentleman is just, um, you know, he's managing three, three networking groups and just the, the welcoming nature of these groups. So I'm really excited to introduce you uh, to Chris Johnson, the market director of the Leader Builders Group. So, Chris, welcome to the Success Insight Podcast. Howard, how are you? Doing well, my friend, doing well. And, you know, I, as I was, you know, doing the introduction here, I was thinking about, you know, and, and the reasons why I thought I would love to have you on the show is just that, you know, networking in this day and age where we're, we're there's so much uh, angst in, in, in our, our how we live, what we do, where we do it, and networking is such a, a, an important part of staying connected to people. And what you're doing, you know, with, with the, the folks at these groups is so very powerful. And, you know, I'd love, you know, to learn more about you, how you got started, and, and how you got into this, this idea of, of planning and executing, promoting this idea of, of networking. And, just uh, the effect, and really to, to demonstrate the effect that you're having on, on other people's lives. So let's let's start with your story. Tell us a little bit more about well, thank yourself. Thank you, thank you for that. And I, you know, I'm very grateful that you and I had a chance to meet a couple months ago. I don't even know how you even got introduced to the group. I mean, so was there somebody that you knew? I, I think it was uh, Brandon and Amanda. You uh, um, yeah. Grandma's Wealth Wisdom and Brandon and Amanda actually own the coffee shop, the Overflow Coffee Bar, which was that was my yeah. second office right around the corner from me, and <laughs> that was my yeah, literally it's yeah, my that, the second office. They're mm -hmm. awesome people. Yeah, Brandon and Amanda are a very integral part of of what we do with Chat at Eight, and then we also do uh, Mingle at Midtown. We have two groups: Chat at Eight Northbrook, Chat at Eight for rich and it's it's something I'm very passionate about it's something that allows me to have tremendous uh, impact on people and I hope they feel that when they come in we try to be extremely welcoming to folks and then we find that introvert which I think happens that you go to a chamber event or you go to some other networking event we see that all the time you'll have an introvert and they'll stand there in the corner and feel a little bit out of place but we take tremendous pride in, in grabbing that person and you know introduce them to somebody like you and find these synergies where you know they can they can meet other folks that they can do business with but you know our whole thing with with, with networking and it, it starts with people everything in life is about relationships i don't care what business you're in and i've been in uh you know several in my career you know had an entrepreneurial background but as far as building networking groups and building synergies and alliances i mean i find that to be really one of the most satisfying things that that i do excellent excellent and you know in the, the spirit of full disclosure i actually am a classic introvert and it is probably through being an entrepreneur myself only my own business and having to do it all sales the marketing the execution is you have to also learn how to network and it, it, it's actually fun. Is it easy? Sometimes not so easy, but it's a lot of fun. And I think as an introvert, we start to kind of build that muscle, so to speak. We learn how, you know, this is not so bad and I enjoy doing this. So I definitely, you know, for all the introverts out there, when you're in the Chicagoland area, you know, the chat at eight and the mingle at uh, Midtown, these are great events to go to and start to network. And I am curious, though, is how did these these networking events come about? Had you been a part of another networking club, or 
you know, what was the brainchild behind this? Well, I've been in the networking thing. It's been something I've done my entire 20 plus year career, you know, and you go to the chamber events and you see things that you like, you think that you think you can improve on. And, and that's what we, we tried to do. I used to, uh, you know, my background is in clubs. So I spent 12 years in the club world and, you know, studied this for a very, very long time. And, had another, you know, I've been around some really great people, Howard, in my life, you being one of them, that you just add on to that, to that, uh, you know, trend. But I've had some awesome people that I've been around, and uh, I try to emulate a lot of those things. I had a gentleman named Eric Holtman that ran a club and uh, ran our group in Northbrook, and he uh, he does voiceovers and those types of things. He's got a, a wonderful voice, but he just was a great leader in how he carried the group and how he began it and got a lot of people involved and he was another one of those guys that was very uh, welcoming and friendly to people and really made you know gave everybody a, a part of the group in some way by finding out what their strengths were and then you know bringing that to the group and getting getting everybody involved as possible like you know I think a guy that runs a good group is almost like a point guard in basketball mm-hmm. um, you know you try to get everybody involved in the game and and that's what we try to do. But my, my background was in clubs for many, many years. And then I, you know, my influences with a, a gentleman named Thomas Deere that, that I just uh, thought the world of. And, you know, he was one that's like, what are you going to do to be creative? And so that was one of the things that we started to do was, was to do groups and then to invite other people in that, you know, we felt like we could help. So that's how it all evolved. But And then when I uh, started on with Leader and Builders Group, uh, with Ryan, I mean, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do, and that was one of the first things that we talked about is, you know, how do we get synergies and, and, and uh, people excited to, to work with leader builders, and, you know, it all starts with what are you going to do for them? So we talk, when we, when we sit down with folks, we bring them in, we don't even talk about ourselves. We talk about them first. Right. And again, all this stuff that I'm talking about is a very simplistic thing, but I think a lot of folks don't do it that way. You, you go to a networking group, people hand out their business card and, you know, you don't even know what they do. So for us, you know, we wanted to make it about them first. And then once they find out, you know, that it's about them and you help them generate business or help them get a connection or a lead, if you will, you know, you're forever and, you know, they'll, they'll be forever uh, indebted to you or they'll buy into what you're trying to do in your vision with, with the networking. So it's easy to get somebody to come one time to a networking group, as you know. The mm-hmm. question is, how do you get them to come continuously and to come all the time? And if you don't help folks with a, a nugget, as we say in the world, of networking, give them a nugget that they can take home with them or under, or learn something, or if you can't help them get business or in some way, I think you're really going to struggle. So to get people to come once, that's pretty easy. To get them to come all the time is the most difficult part of what I call social capital. Sure. And I really look forward to, you know, attending, you know, the events. I love the fact, you know, if not the first week, the second, the second visit, first visit, et cetera, that over time you start to have conversations, you kind of gravitate to people. And, and I, I love the fact that you said, that, you know, some folks go to networking events, they hand out the business cards here on, here's who I am. It's my title. Titles mean nothing uh, as a, uh, as a LinkedIn guy, I see titles all the time and they, they don't give me any idea of who this person is, what they do. And most importantly, we don't know what they care about and what their needs you know, and what the people that they're looking to meet, what those people are. So it's not, it's you, it's your clients. What do your clients need? How are you going to solve their, their issue, their concern? And what I love about you know, finding out about people and having those conversations is that, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to to sell them business or to become their coach or to write their LinkedIn profile. What I'm looking for is, is there some way I can help you? Is there somebody you would like to meet? Is there a problem you need to have solved? And I'd love to understand it. And then maybe I know somebody that I can introduce you to. And that's what I love about this this style of networking. It's not forced, but it be, it grows 
organically if you to use that those choices yeah words. i appreciate that and, and some folks you know there's groups where you go to and we we know the corporate name of those groups but you know they're, they're exclusive right to whatever business you're in and some folks like get a kick out of for us there could be nine kitchen or whatever remodeling you know whatever you want whatever you may be but I, I mean, there's enough business to go around, and we will find something in common with one of those nine other kitchen or remodeling companies that we can help them with. So there's enough business for everybody. I'm confident enough because of the way we do things that we would be the choice anyway. And, you know, we just thoroughly enjoy that aspect of things that, that it's not exclusive. So for, for my dream is to have 100 people in every single room and finding, you know, those other 99 folks in the room business. I mean, that's what I get joy out of. And I hopefully they find something interesting in the group or someone in the group that can help them when someone's down for that day and they come to the group and they get uplifted by something or something I said or something you said, that's a valuable thing. And that's why we do it. Excellent. And I definitely share in that, that dream with you. I am curious, you know, this is, the networking, the, the being a business professional, it's not your first rodeo. You know, somewhere way back when you were a little kid, who was the major influence on you? And how did that kind of inform you know, the work you're doing today, you know, with leader builders, with the networking? Who who's, who was that significant mentor in your life? Well, I mean, I would be the first one to say that I'm not embarrassed to tell anyone that I love my mother and I love my father. So I came from Southern Indiana. I grew up in, in Bloomington, it's about 50 miles south of Indianapolis and uh, just came from a, a, a really strong background. You know, my, my mother was someone that had tremendous influence on me from, you know, she was a teacher's assistant for many, many years, never made a lot of money, but uh, just, you know, someone you want, you know, if, if you have an issue or you need to talk about something, you know, like most mothers, you, she was the one that, that you would chat with. My dad's more of the black and white person. So for him, it was about Indiana basketball and about news. I don't think my dad's maybe watched three movies in his entire life. But we, I mean, to this day, my father and I still speak once a day. So we're, you know, my whole background was about, uh, Indiana basketball. I mean, we, uh, growing up in Indiana, I mean, that's just what you did. I probably went to 150, 200 high school games a year. It's like Hoosiers. Yeah. So the movie Hoosiers is a very strong depiction of how it was to grow up in Indiana. But, you know, we would go take a look at certain players. And, you know, if Coach Knight was there back when I was a kid and he would walk into the gym, it was like a whole, the whole 8,000 people in the gym if you're in. They see more in Newcastle to turn their head. Oh, Coach Knight's here. So it was a a really big deal. But even to this day, my father and I still speak almost every day, and I mean at least once a day. And it's something I look forward to. And when my parents pass, I can tell you this from in all sincerity, it'll be the saddest day of my life. So you know that I just came from a tremendous foundation, and and my wife too. I mean, my wife grew up in. Columbia, Missouri, and she can't, her parents, tremendous people, and she also has a tremendous foundation. So I've always, you know, if, if you hang out with winners, your mom and dad's a winner, I strongly believe that you're going to have a lot of that stuff rub on you. You have, you have you come up with hardships and negativity and, you know, your mom and dad are smokers or whatever, not that that's the end of the world, but, you know, negative things rub off on you. You know, my mom, dad's one of the most positive people I've ever been around in my life. I mean, even when, you know, things get negative I mean, he just doesn't allow himself to go there. And he's always uh, cognizant of his words and, you know, words and words are some of the most, the biggest weapons that, that there are. So I learned that very early on that, you know, watch what you say to people because some of the things that you don't think have an impact really have a big impact on, on folks. And, you know, you talk to your, your wife or friends. I mean, it, most of what I've tried to do with folks is try to uplift them and, and impact them in some way. If people are down, I try to provide assistance in some way. And, and, and when people need a, uh, a push, I'm not afraid to do that either. So, you know, we're all psychologists in some, some parts of our careers and in our, our lives. <laughs> 
Well, you know, it's very interesting. It is you just shared that that's the story about you know, our words are can be weapons if we're not careful. And I was having this discussion. In fact, it was today even is the importance of the conversations we have even as parents with our children or whether it's words to our kids words to our spouse while the kids are in the room in those little things the littlest thing can have an impact on us years later and yes and we don't i don't think appreciate that that you know we're fragile human beings and we have to at all times be very careful of the words we use the tone of our voice and something we may think of as a joke it gets taken and internalized and it may not manifest well there's itself. there's truth there's to every joke right yeah there's a little truth in every joke so <laughs> so you know i'm very cognizant of what as i said of what i say and we have a little little daughter um, ourselves Beth and I, and so I mean, those are things that, that I'm very uh, cognizant of and what I say and my actions to her, and, you know. That's, uh, you know, so very important. You know, I'm curious, um, when we were preparing for today's interview, you shared a, a video with me, and, you know, obviously being from Indiana, you know, basketball is life. Uh, by the way, I grew up in the Detroit suburbs, so... I hope that don't hold that against me. I was more of so a you're a hockey guy now. So you're hockey filming? guy, Michigan fan, you know whatever. Yes. All right, you're a Wolverine or a Spartan? I was a Wolverine. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, well, been the Ann Arbor for many games up there. So. All right. So yeah, beautiful, right. beautiful campus up there. Oh, by the way, and there's also a great deli up in Ann Arbor. I don't know if you ever saw that one too. But uh, Chris and I were talking about <laughs> delis before. So Zingerman's Deli. We're going to give a plug to Zingerman's Deli. Zinger, never been to Zingerman's. Never been. Oh, so we got to do a road trip Is now. Is it better than 11th City Diner? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's worth the wait. <laughs> oh, man. So you were sharing. I don't know if we're going to edit that out. We're going to keep that in. Um, so you were sharing this video of, of this uh, young man that was – that. And maybe you tell a little, give us a little background about it, but I'm interested also in why you shared that particular video, because I have some ideas why, but I'd love to hear if you could just share a little bit about the video you shared with us, and we'll put the link, you know, in the transcript uh, on, on our website, but, you know, tell sure. us. Well, it's something that I do believe I saw live on CBS about, 10 years ago and I am a a like pretty much every person I'm sure you interviewed I know Jack tell my good friend you interviewed on your last podcast is a lifelong learner and so am I like any of the I mean I just don't I don't have all the answers so believe me I I'm always looking for any source that I can get it whether it be on the internet or whether you know something I watch or whatever or, or reading or listening to something, it doesn't doesn't matter. But I saw this live about ten years ago, his name's Jason McElwain, and he had autism. And the coach, he was a manager for, I don't know, a couple of years on the high school team and the coach ended up uh with about three or four minutes to go, putting him in the game, I think his senior year, the last game that he that he uh was in was in high school and the kid ended up hitting like six or seven three pointers. And I tell you what, I mean, I've watched that video probably twice, maybe once when I'm feeling, I don't know if I'm feeling like I'm not like I'm big on being grateful. So if I'm feeling like a little entitled or not in that grateful state of mind, I watch that video. And I mean, I'm an emotional guy. And again, that's something else I'm not going to apologize for. I'm pretty emotional. My wife might roll her eyes when I, when I say that, but I mean, that one really gets to me, but he had like, I mean, he had six threes and he goes, I was hot as a pistol. He said, so, and from that point, I think he's now a motivational speaker. He's run the New York city marathon. I want to say, so he's taken that property. He was on the ESPYs whenever it happened right after that event happened, he was on the ESPYs. I think he received an award. So he became a bit of a, I don't know what I would say, a celebrity, but he was, he had his, 
however minutes of fame from that. But he's taken that and used it as a springboard to other things. And, you know, his story, I'm sure, would be very motivating to a number. I mean, that, that you can do anything you want, no matter what your setback is or what, whatever deficiency that you've been born with. And, you know, it, it's a reminder to me that I, I am very, very blessed in my life. And there really is no excuse to not be grateful and to help as many people as I possibly can, which, and I'm almost feeling a calling to, to, you know, I went to a, the Indiana Northwestern women's game and I had a autistic or special needs gentleman that went up to me and it was cold. And I wanted to, uh, I asked him if he wanted to sit in my car and he did. So I'm almost feeling that calling to, to maybe work in that environment at some point with, you know, special needs. You know, that's a story that it's, it's poignant it's what was coming across for me and watching it is the that everybody's bringing something to the table in an environment you know we have roles to play uh we can step out of those roles and perhaps try new roles so you know kudos to the coach for putting the kid in and letting him stay in and just the lifelong experience that he can then take with him and do the other things he's doing which you've just described what was coming to mind too, as you were sharing the story uh, earlier in the year, I was uh, interviewing or being interviewed to potentially coach uh, uh, an individual who was blind. And I have never coached anybody that was, that was, uh, you know, uh, sight impaired, I should say. Uh, and what was interesting about this person is they were a, an accomplished triathlete and they were also an accomplished Ted talk speaker. And as, I, as you were sharing that story, I was thinking, that kid would be a great guest for this show. That individual that I was being interviewed for, for the coaching, would be a great individual to have on the show because, you know, they, they were dealt some cards that, however unfortunate, they rose above it. And I think that's, the, that's what I got of that story is he, that kid rose above the challenge that he had, he was there. And kudos again to the teammates, to the coaches, to the entire, you know, attendant attendees in, in, the, in the gym of recognizing the importance of that moment of being supportive. And so it is a wonderful calling. There's people out there that need, you know, that, that what you have to give, Chris, in, you know, whether it be Special Olympics or other – uh, other types of events. I mean, it's just, it's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, and I, and I you know, to, to add on to that, as I think about it, I think he's a coach now too. I think he coaches basketball. I don't know if he's the assistant or if he's become the head coach, but it's just a, a really, really heartwarming story. And, you know, I, I just, you know, you just have to have tremendous empathy um, for people. And the, like you said, everybody has a gift. And no matter what the limitation is, you can bring something to the table. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, really cool story. And it's one that I really, uh, I watch that all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just appreciate you sharing it. You know, I'm thinking too, next time I'd love to have you on again. And I'm thinking, you know, in the, in the world of leader builders, I mean, you work with a lot of the trades folks, you work with a lot of customers, and a lot of it is about, managing communicating managing expectations you know getting the best out of the people because you, your clients are spending their hard-earned money to get your product produced and installed so i think that would be a great conversation maybe we could delve into that uh, on a future uh, i'd love it visit on the show I'd love it. excellent i'd love um, it listen in the in the, the few minutes we have left uh if our listeners would like to learn more about you, would like to learn more about Leader Builders. What's the best way to, or even the, you know, chat at aid, maybe a little what's the best way for them to kind of get to meet you, get to know you, and perhaps even reach out? Well, their chat at aid is on Facebook. We send out an invitation so they could friend me on Facebook and I can start sending out the invite that way. Same way with Mingle with Midtown. Uh, Nangle Midtown, before I, you let me go, Nangle Midtown started in Willowbrook, and I just got word right before we went on, Howard, that they're going to do it in every single 
Midtown that they have. So they have one in the city. They just put $100 million into that. I would love to help them with that, but we'll see if they uh, ask for my guidance. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have one in Palatine, and they have one in uh, Bannyburn, and they have one in Atlanta, Georgia. I think they have one in Montreal. Again, it's not a plug for Midtown, but ironically, Midtown was my very first job out of college that I worked at in Atlanta. So everything in life comes full circle. Nothing ever, everything happens for a reason. I know it's the most, most misused thing, but it really is true. Everything happens for a reason. So I was almost feel like it was meant to be that I was supposed to come back to Midtown and join here and start a networking group and try to uh, impact some people in that way. But, so yeah, so they're going to, you know, they're going to run it at every single club. So I guess we've done a few things right. You've been a big part of it. Well, and thank you. And, uh, hey, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get on some, uh, in a car or on a plane somewhere and go help them, uh, you know, build it out, so to speak. Listen, the last, thing before, the last thing before we go, we ask all of our guests to you know, kind of think about and insights to go. Uh, this is something we kind of, uh, my, my business partner, Randy Ford, who I sh should have mentioned at the onset, is the uh, co-host of the Success Insight podcast. So Randy often does a lot of our interviews, but we've come up with this insight to go where we like ask our guests to share at the end of the episode, something could be a book, an idea, a quote, uh, something that you would like to share with the audience that, you know, perhaps it's been on your mind or perhaps it's, you know, this is my mantra every day. So what would you like to share? Well, you know, I'm a basketball guy and, you know, I, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, I've been a sports agent. I got a couple, one buddy's an agent. I got another buddy that's a big sports writer from college. But I've been really in a Jim Balvano kick. Um, and his SB speech is very, very famous. And he's, I don't know how much millions of dollars or even a million dollars they've raised for cancer. But I did listen to one of his speeches that he made before he did get cancer. He was speaking to a group of executives at a sales conference. And he just talked about how much he, again, he said, uh, you know, he echoed what I said, but he loved his father, which, you know, I mean, I, I thought it was great that he mentioned that. But what he said, you know, the thing I took away from it, he said every year his dad would say, my bags are packed for you. And he'd say, you're going to go to the, na you're going to win a national championship. We're going to go to the final four and I'm, I'm going to be there. He would tell his son that I'm going to be there. And Jim would say, well, dad, it's really hard. It's really hard to do it. And he was, no, no, you're going to do it. I'm going to be there. My back, bags are packed for you. And when Valvano won the championship with North Carolina State in 83, there's a picture of uh, his brother who's still in broadcasting. Now took a picture of him and his dad together after the game, you know, on, you know, probably by the, where they cut the nets down and said, my bags are packed for you. He wrote that on there. And that's kind of been my mantra for every single person, whether they work with us in our company with leader builders or, Anyone that I meet on a daily basis, my bags are packed for you, and I'm interested in helping you with your success. So whether it helps me or not or whether it helps them, you know, whether it helps me or not, it's not important. Whether what I can do to help them, subcontractors, folks in business that have nothing to do with me, but I don't get a single district business, it makes no difference. It's about me serving them. So I've taken that to heart with Alfano, and I, I love that. So. Well, thank you very much, and I, I truly appreciate, and I know our, our audience will appreciate that insight to go. Folks, we are uh, running out of time, and I do appreciate you sticking with us. This has been a great interview with Chris Johnson. He's the market director at the Leader Builders Group. Uh, he's also the one of the, the founders of the Chat at 8 and Mingle at Midtown networking groups here in the Chicagoland area. We'll put the links to those groups on, on our, uh, our web pages. So you can find us at successinsightpodcast.com. If listen to this podcast, what we just did with Chris, if you liked it, let us know. If you've got some ideas for other podcasts, please let us know that as well. And there's probably a good uh, dozen or more podcasts that we've already done. So have, you know, if you're in the car, listen to those too. Um, Chris, thank you again for spending uh, part of your late afternoon with us and definitely want to get you on again because I'm, I know there's some more impactful stories here and, I, and you're, you're a great guest to, to have these conversations with. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Howard. 
So there you have it, folks. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. This is Howard Fox for my co-host, Randy Ford. This is the Success Insights Podcast. We'll see you next time. Six Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. 